Alrighty team, it is that time of year again. Time to talk about the nine planners that I'm planning on using next year. But before we have a look at these ones, let's have a look at the ones I used and didn't use this year. I always find it valuable to look back and reflect before looking forward. So here is my planner stack from 2022, and I can't say that I actually used all of these planners, but I had good intentions. Having said that, of the 12 notebooks, 11 of them did actually get used, but let's have a look through. The first collection we have are what I call my everyday bullet journals, or the ones that I use every day. So in these ones I put things like my monthly logs, my monthly setups, habit trackers, daily logs, weekly logs, all of those kind of things. Effectively anything that's related to daily and weekly and monthly planning. As you can see, I did have three of them. So we had this teal one, which was my first one. It lasted me from January to the end of April. The second one, which was a blue B5 size journal. This is the first time I'd used a B5, so that was a fun experiment. That one also lasted me for four months. So going from the start of May to the end of August. And then we have this little sweetheart here, which is a B6 size journal. This one lasted me from the start of September to the end of December. Or, like, it will. We're not quite at the end of December just yet. Technically speaking, I did not put November in here. I did use a digital bullet journal for that month because I was running out of space. Plus, it was a good experiment. The next journal that I had in my 2022 lineup was this guy here, an A5 Artronol of Notebook with the galaxy drip design. Very pretty. This one was my yearly collections journal though. So holding any of the collections that I wanted to use for the entire year of 2022, but didn't want to have to reset up with every new bullet journal. As I showed you guys, I had three everyday bullet journals, so I didn't want to set up a year in pixels three times over and then have to transfer everything. Instead, those kind of collections went in here. Another collections journal that I have is my long-term collections journal. The collections in this one last longer than one year. So it's effectively reference materials like swatch pages or collections that I'm going to want to refer to over and over again. The kind of stuff that I don't want to set up with every new journal. So effectively like the yearly collections journal, but these ones have a longer span of time that I intend to use them for. This one I think I set up at the start of 2020, possibly? So when I say long-term collections, I do mean long-term. Another notebook that I had intended to use for 2022 was this one here, the Piper's Art Sketchbook. But as you can see, it is completely empty. I was intending on using this as a kind of doodle sketching kind of practice book, but that type of creativity wasn't really something that I focused on this year, so haven't used it. This journal here I intended on using as a content planner, so a place to track things like my social media growth, write out the content ideas that I had, and schedule them, as is probably suggested by the term content planner. But the issue that I had with this one is that it was actually a repurposed journal from when I was trying to have a separate goal planner. So all the content planning stuff was actually in the middle of the notebook. That didn't actually end up sitting too well with me. I found it more difficult to remember to use it because you had to come to the middle of the notebook. So I then set up this notebook instead to be my content planner. That meant that all of those collections that I would have liked to have at the start of a journal were actually at the start of a journal. Plus it's purple and purple's pretty. This one was set up in a pretty similar way, just with a bit of a nicer color palette, in my personal opinion. But I did end up falling away with using this at about mid-year. Sometimes we set up journals and they just don't really work out. This notebook here, though, then got repurposed into what I call an R&D bujo, or research and development. It's effectively a place to trial layouts, or do layout setups for videos that I had. Effectively layouts that I'm not going to be using myself. So very much for things like idea videos and that kind of stuff. This journal here was also used as an R&D bujo because I effectively ran out of space in the blue one. And then I ran out of space in this one as well. So I had a third R&D bujo for the year of 2022. What can I say? I've got a lot of ideas and I like sharing them with you. We of course have the Gynomator journal, which I like to use as a brainstorming book. This one's a lined notebook, so I wouldn't really use it as a regular planner, because I prefer Doc Grid, but as a brainstorming book, totally works. The nice part about this one is that because it has the specific function of being a brainstorming book, I don't mind being a little more messy in here, I can really just get my thoughts down onto paper. 
And then we have this cheeky little sweetie, which was an unintended addition to my planner lineup for the year of 2022. This one in particular was used as a kind of self-care reflections type journal. You can see that in the front cover, I outline the journal's purpose. So a place to just journal my thoughts, get out all of those kind of emotions and just get all of my feelings onto paper. But it also ended up being a space to do some sticker collages and just kind of unrestricted creativity, which was really nice. So that was 2022, but now we have the 2023 lineup. You can see I have a stack of nine notebooks that I'm intending on using for the year ahead. And my first one is going to be my everyday bullet journal for 2023. This one is the A5 snowflake design from the Artronol of Winter collection from 2021, but it's so beautiful. I love the glitter cover. I do also already have the setup video of this one on the channel, so jump into the description box to find a link to that along with links to anything else that's related to this video, of course. Just like my last everyday bullet journals, this one's gonna get things like monthly setups, any of my daily and weekly planning, that kind of stuff. We then, of course, have the return of the yearly collections journal because I use it year upon year. There's no way that I'm gonna fill an entire notebook with collections that are just for one year, so this one's gonna get used for a couple of years in a row. Again, this one also has a setup video linked in the description box. The long-term collections journal is also back again because it's for long-term collections, so things that I want to use year upon year upon year. And I also have the return of the content planner, but the way that I'm going to use this is going to change just a little bit. I'm not going to do the monthly content planning in here. This is more so going to be for long-term projects and long-term goals related to my content planning. We also have the current R&D Bujo, because I haven't finished using it yet. I'm only about I don't know, 50 or so pages in, so still a fair bit of space to set up more journal ideas. The self-care journal is going to be sticking around as well, because this is one that I just use kind of haphazardly or on a not-so-regular schedule, so it still has plenty of pages left too. The brainstorming book is the last repeat that I have in my lineup, so the last two journals that we have after this one are new to the lineup. The first of which is a five-year journal, or effectively a journal that I'm going to be using for the next five years to do a little bit of daily reflection. This one is set up so that it has a half page per day, and I use that same section for that day five years in a row. This one does have a setup video coming, so make sure to stick around for that one. The other new addition that we have to the lineup is actually a notebook that we've seen before because I was using it at the end of 2020 to do some daily logging and stuff when I wasn't super in love with the journal that I was using at the time. But this one is getting repurposed into... I don't want to get your hopes up and call it a reading journal, but effectively it's going to be a place for taking notes on readings that I'm doing. In particular readings that are related to kind of personal development stuff. Otherwise, I don't really have a good space for those notes. They kind of end up just in random books or on random pieces of paper. So having them all in one notebook, I think is gonna be helpful. That may seem like quite a lot of planners to be using at once, and to be fair, it kinda is, but not all of these are gonna be used on a daily basis. For instance, my yearly collections journal, I typically try to check in with once a week. For my R&D Bujo, that one is very much just when I have ideas to put into a place in a journal, you know, ones for videos and stuff like that. The brainstorming book only gets used when I need to brainstorm something. So really, the only ones that are actually getting used on a everyday basis are, unsurprisingly, the everyday Bujo, because it's kind of in the name, and also the five-year journal, because that one has a space per day for the next five years. I would love to know though, what journals are you planning on using for the year ahead? And if you wanted to see the flip throughs of some of these journals and my previous ones, then the playlist on screen is where it's at. Tap or click the screen here and I'll see you over there.